mood music has shifted a little bit more optimistic from the people that have sat in your seat. Nigeria is expected to grow by 3.75% this year. That's a bit ambitious, isn't it? What are you going to deliver in a tough year for 2023? Well, for 2023, we're looking at a growth of 3.5%, and we're looking at closing 2022 around the same number as well. We're still waiting for our last quarter report to, to come out. Uh, growth has uh, slowed down a bit in the third quarter of 2022, and therefore we have had to moderate our, uh, our year-end projections to reflect that, that decline. What's going to drive 2023 for you? If you've had to moderate in the Q4, what drives, what drives this year forward? What drives uh, 2023 forward is increased revenues from the non-oil sector mm -hmm. and also uh, the beginning of the pickup of revenues from the oil sector itself. I, I'm sure you know that we've had some problems regarding production, mm -hmm. and, um, but the production has uh, picked up and it's going to, it looks good uh, to continue to reach the numbers that we are put in the budget, so we hope. To so, what, what do you think? What do you think Nigeria will produce in terms of oil this year? What's realistic? I know Melikari is going after the oil thieves. What can you deliver in terms of oil production? Our target is 1.6 million barrels per day, and that comfortably achieve that. That, that we can comfortably achieve that. We're about 1.25, 1.3 now, average of. So we should be able to reach that, and hopefully we we surpass that as well with the measures that have been put in place. Look, you're in full electioneering mode, and the election is hot on our heels. Would you say your party has done enough to win re-election? Inflation, it's a global problem, but that's doubled. Growth has slowed to just an average of 1.1% from 2015 when you took over. You've done enough to convince the public to put you back in office? We have done a lot. We've done a lot in terms of taking care of the people, increasing our infrastructure stock, holding the economy to grow on a consistent basis. Despite two recessions, we pulled out of recession quickly and set the country back on the path of growth. We've also done a lot in terms of being able to provide for our people at the time that people need uh, help the most. But the, the accusation back to that, that, that political narrative is that debt and debt sustainability um, is probably the single biggest issue. Nigeria is now spending 80% of its revenue on debt servicing last year. IMF reckons that's going to break 100%. That is not sustainable. You've not got a sustainable debt trajectory. Well, 80% is not sustainable, and our plan is it's bring, it's coming down to 60% in 2023. And how are we doing that? We're doing that by increasing revenues and by reducing, significantly reducing costs to enable us uh, cope better. But that's going to hit the real economy, isn't it? If you've got to pull costs out, that's going to hit the people on the ground. Well, there the very are, people you there are some costs that we can pull back on mm -hmm. that will not hit the economy, but there are some costs that we must sustain, such as uh, provisions for education and health, as well as infrastructure. So you would defend robustly that you're in a sustainable debt sustainability. I, I just am struggling with that. We are sustainable in our debt trajectory. We have made our plans to make sure we're able to consistently service our debts. And by the way, we're also exiting for a subsidy, which is a huge cost and part of the contributors to where we are in terms mm -hmm. of this, the, the, the debt stock. So once we pull the, the, the first subsidy out, uh, production of crude oil increases, and then we sustain the improvements we have put in place in terms of non-oil revenue. Mm -hmm then we should be able to come down to 60% uh, uh, um, uh, debt to revenue. Does that open up the bond markets for you again? If I look at the yield movement, the current yields, are they low enough for you to consider a euro not, bond issue not, this year? Not, not 2023, no. You're not in the bond market uh, 2023? No, not 2023. What do yields need to get to for you to think, yes, we're back in power, I can get back to the bond market? international debt market? If we're able to get back to the rates of uh, early 2021, then we can consider going back to the bonds market. But then we are consistently monitoring the bond market. We are monitoring the performance of our bonds. So when it gets to that comfortable level, we will explore it. But liquidity, how, how, how big an issue is liquidity for you? Is it getting tough? Is it getting tight? It is tough. It's an election year. It's also a year where we have planned um, a census in April. Mm -hmm. So those are two very large spends that we have uh, early, early in the first quarter of this year. Look, under President Buhari, 
the bill for running the country is at $50 billion. I, I want to deal with this in a couple of different ways. That, to many people, is something which is just very unsustainable. Are you talking to the World Bank, to the IMF, any multilateral agencies about any help or relief on your debt? Um, we have been able to get support from the World Bank, from the IMF, mm -hmm. during the COVID. From the IMF, we got support uh, of the SDRs. So we have two rounds of SDRs. That had helped us uh, a great deal. And also, Is there more to come? Are you in active negotiations for more? So there's this general negotiation about another round of SDRs. We are part of the group that is asking for that. And we do hope it comes because it will benefit all of the emerging economies as well as the low-income uh, countries. How close are you to a significant announcement on, on that from the multilaterals? Could it be before the election? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. So we just want to wait and see what happens in the spring meetings. If I look at the currency side, you know, we talk about liquidity be, being tight. So out of the bond market, a currency which has uh, dropped by more than 10%, many EM currencies have had the same tough time. Is it a deliberate move by the government to embolden that weakening of the currency? Well, it is a plan of the Monetary Authority, and uh, it was planned carefully and, and uh, implemented. Uh, most people even say slowly, but we are where we are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, of course, what happens to the U.S. dollar affects us as well. Of course. Yeah. And the, the dollar has come off from, from, from its peak. Is it time to dump those multiple exchange rates? I mean, it's cost you $144 billion between 2017 and 2021. Is it time to dump and run on the multiple exchange so rates? So right now we have one formal market, the NAFEX, mm -hmm. where trading is done. And that is the rate that we use for official exchanges as well. So if I get any dollar inflows, that's where it is monetized as well. Any outflows I have is monetized also at that uh, I, &E, I &E window. So we have only one window that is an official window. I mentioned $50 billion, the, 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 the story that we wrote yesterday on, under President Buhari. Now, Many people talk about the ways and means advances from the central bank. Your government is now asking the National Assembly to convert that, that debt and part of that debt into a bond to be repaid over 40 years. The question, politically, I suppose, and from markets is, is that legal? And what do you say to the critics of that, of that strategy? It is legal. It uh, is legal. And we couldn't do it earlier on because there was limitations as provided in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. But in the 2021 Finance Act, we actually made an amendment that is enabling us to do that now. We could have done this earlier. But is it politically palatable to ask the country to pay this bill? It is the necessary thing to do, and it is the right thing to do. We don't want to leave this for another administration to uh, come and do it. So what we have also is a situation where this will provide significant fiscal relief because it's bringing down the cost of uh, servicing the ways of men very significantly.